salutations all my friends and family, fans and followers of the Zeta Nation. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, thank you for joining us for our 76th episode of The Revolution. I am your host with the most from the east to the west coast, like peanut butter on your breakfast toast, Emperor Zeta. And I am coming to you, as always, from the under-renovation Fortress of Solitude here in Etobicoke, Ontario, Canada. So this week, we take a trip down to Astoria, my brand new restaurant that I have been going on for for weeks now. We're going to check out some of the food, show you what the place looks like, and even show you a flaming cheese. Plus, we had a little technical snafu with our footage this week, so we had to film Comic Book Day once again. First off, I want to apologize to Fred and the special guest that we had lined up for this week's Comic Book Day, because unfortunately the footage did get erased. But, fear not, we do have a Comic Book Day, and we do have a special returning guest. Well, anyways, that is enough from me. Let's get on with the show. Rock and roll, baby. And here we go. This week we've got new things going on. He has started to learn how to wave. So now if you go like this, you'll start to do this back. We officially pierced our hook through with the second tooth. He's singing. Singing and conducting with his arm at times. It's hilarious. Getting more faster at crawling. So pretty soon I'm going to have a second headache to deal with once he gets fully mobile. Eating better. Oh yes, went out to dinner to Astoria. He is a fan of their potatoes and rice. He had two helpings. But definitely is a little porker and it eats like his mom. He's sleeping better. The past two nights he's almost slept entirely through. Catherine went to a birthday party. We took Anthony with us. It was nice they had a little indoor playground with the toddler section. He was a big hit. Everybody was like, oh my goodness, he's so cute, look at those cheeks. But he was playing on the floor, in the extra saucer, and he loves to go on the slide, in the little toddler section. And then eventually we lost the baby because he became a hot potato. People wanted to slip him away because he was so cute. According to Hubby, he picked up two Cougars, Latina Cougars. Great, I'm so proud. I'm tired, leave me alone. This week's Raw was kind of boring and I was falling asleep halfway through. I do really miss John Cena. I, I'm waiting for his return. I can't wait for the Royal Rumble. It's going to be packed. Definitely not enough Vicky Guerrero this week. And not enough Brad Maddox, which I never thought I would say before. Too much Triple H, too much Stephanie, too much crying Big Show. <laughs> The highlight of Raw was definitely the CM Punk, Curtis Angle, Ryback, Heyman, Hoopla that went on. CM Punk distracted, Curtis Axel cost him a match, distracted Ryback, played around with Paul Heyman, messed with them both. And if CM Punk goes under at the pay-per-view, WWE is just a product of bad booking. CM Punk should go over Ryback, get to Heyman, and then have Ryback with Axel, an implosion of a Paul Heyman guy. Then CM Punk can move on to where he should be and in the title picture, facing hopefully Daniel Bryan. So I don't have high hopes for Daniel Bryan winning the title for the third time on Sunday. He's technically a two-time WWE Champion, and this latest bullshit crap 
that they're doing with Triple H, taking the title away from him, is just taking away from the amazing talent that Daniel Bryan is. I don't see him winning against Orton because I just see Triple H trying to push himself in the corporation angle right down our throats. Although there is an advantage to this corporation angle, not just the fact that the Shield is getting screen time, what a great feud that they're going to have, and match with the Rhodes family at the pay-per-view. Great idea, great concept, and I'm glad Dusty is not getting back into the ring, that's for sure. But one good thing that has come out of all of this is that we have increased screen time for Zack Ryder. <laughs> that's right, Zack Ryder, one of my all-time favorites, was on Raw for the third week in a row. Oh, radio on Raw for a third week in a row. Yes, he jogged, but he always jogged. But at least he's getting screened up. And he was even on main event. He was on two WWE shows this week. I get serious, bro! I'm not going to hold out hope, so that this is going to be a renewed push for Zack Ryder, because we all know they're never going to really push Zack Ryder anywhere, anytime soon, or ever. But at least he's getting screen time, at least I get to see some broski boots and attempted Rough Riders, and you can always follow him on Twitter, where Zack Ryder is the master. I just want WWE to put out a box set of the Zack Ryder Z True Long Island Story episodes. Come on, it killed any other YouTube show they ever had, and it's the reason that he will be a legend. restaurant sometime soon so now we are down here in the restaurant that I work in the greatest place I've worked so far as a server so we're going to show you some of the food that we have here I have a whole table full of guests with me today hello I have my cousin Pina my beautiful wife my psychotic daughter and my wonderful niece who looks like she's about to punch the camera and then I have the little man here playing with the menu and this is our server for the evening with my friend Adam there's a wickedly awesome looking patio yeah this was the lady who trained me here on my first week and my second week. So we're starting out with some pita bread, some saganaki, which you guys saw light up, and our delicious fried calamari. Beef food walk, you've been to a succulent medium rare tonight. I got the large salad, which I think is a little bit too big for me, especially if you guys know how I feel about salad. My lovely cousin Pina got herself the delicious looking village salad, which looks ten times better than anything Mr. Greek serves, with the best, the best tzatziki in all of Ontario. The chicken souvlaki, this is the small portion. Two best friends here, so. And there are two of my newest fans for the Zeta Nation. And this is our wonderful kitchen. Not that I've known that longer than anybody here. And this is our beautiful, wonderfully designed dining room area. It's like being back in Greece. Or it's like you know, going to Greece for the very first time.
Hello people, unfortunately I have some good news and some bad news this week. We'll start with the bad news. I accidentally erased all the footage that we recorded this week for Comic Book Day, so my apologies to Fred and to our special guest who made his return this Wednesday, Big Mike. Unfortunately the footage got deleted this week, but worry not, I do have a great surprise for you. I said somebody was returning, and this week we have somebody returning. The pie! The pie! Yes, we have a returning Prince Catherine, so hello, people! Hello, people! It's coming for things! That's right, it's coming for things! And we're here for that. Little baby Prince, we got the empress and the handsome Prince. My head down the road. We are going to feel there. That's right, we're going to go talk to Rob this week. Now, I will be taking over Fred's duties for the comic book review this week because, unfortunately, I erased Fred and he's only there on Wednesdays. We're going to pack everybody up, go on this Saturday, the day before I have to edit this entire episode, and we will... See you soon, people! See you soon, people. See, so the Fantastic Four is back together again. So see, we even brought Rob coffee. It's tea. So we're down here, back at Excalibur Comics. Rob has no idea we're bringing the whole family today. We're here to retake everything that I erased from comic book day. So we are headed upstairs to find out what Rob has to say, and I'm going to take over for Fred on the comics this week. So let's see upstairs. Of Doom time for the second time this week. This is Excalibur Comics, 3030 Blur Street West, upstairs above the Kingsway Theater. <laughs> Alright, so since I accidentally erased Fred this week, I'm going to have to take over his duties and give you the comic book review this week. So, first of all, we have Iron Man 60 in the Secret Origin of Tony Stark. As Fred says, it's one of the best things going in comics right now. He loves this. He swears by it. Then we have something really interesting. This is the all-new X-Men special. It is the original X-Men brought into the future, and somehow Doc Ock shows up through a tear in the space-time continuum, and so the superior Spider-Man, who we all know is Doc Ock, shows up to help them out. And this leads into a the next special, which is the Indestructible Hulk special, which also features Doc Ock and superior Doc Ock Spider-Man. And we have Infinity. Now, Greg Land is drawing this one. Now, as Fred says, there is a big movement against Greg Land because people say his art looks too much like photographs. But I do agree with Fred in that he is a fantastic artist. It's a very interesting series. A brand new take on the Avengers. These are the 
superheroes that are left on Earth during Infinity. So it's really neat to see that. I'm trying to figure out who the spider hero is. Uh, I got a feeling it's Bucky for some reason. Finally, we have the sixth part of the all-new X-Men's Battle of the Atom crossover series going through four or five of the X-Books. It is very interesting. It's a lot of uh, playing with the future and the past because apparently there's been a whole big conflagration since um, since Age of Ultron. Everything's been all screwed up, so everything is messed up with space time. So we're seeing a lot of traveling to the past and traveling to the future in the Marvel comics lately. We'll have to see where that goes. Now, one last thing. Forever Evil 2 did come out this week. I am don't have a copy of it to show you right now because Rob has completely sold out. If you guys can find a copy, pick it up. Also, you should check out Joker's Daughter from the uh, Villains Month as well as Dial E for Evil because they're two small, limited print runs. So you, if you can find these special cover ones, definitely pick those up. There's already a Joker's Daughter from what Rob tells me going for 80 bucks downtown at Silver Snail. We will see you guys next week and I promise to bring you back Fred. <laughs> Just the other day there was a... Oh, the shooting in Washington, D.C. Apparently, this woman, she was, uh, drove up to the White House to try to get in. But there were barricades and she tried to crash through. All the police that were uh, guarding the White House, they're not paid right now because they're not being paid. And, and there's no more jobs for federal tax. That's only temporary. But anyways, these officers uh, tried to stop her. And in fact, she didn't listen and so they, they shot her. As you know, uh, we found out later she was with a young child. Maybe. But we found out now she was under mind altering drugs again. Apparently, I guess it affected her thinking. She was, according to her mother, I think, she was always a bit uh, schizophrenic anyways. And uh, she was off of medication. That's why perhaps she was uh, acting so irrationally. It is, it is, the story sounded kind of strange that someone would want to just drive over. Uh, the barriers to see uh, Obama. Some stories saying she shot at the officers too or something like that. But again, Washington DC is one of the uh, no gun zones in America. New York, Detroit, Chicago, Washington DC, they're all non no no gun zones. So of course those four cities are the four, four highest uh, cities with gun uh, gun related uh, murders and so forth. So uh, it's no surprise that uh, there were gunplay uh, at, at the White House. Again, all, all that gunplay again, done but again with uh, mind altering drugs, just like the other other incident uh, in the uh, military compound. He got in without being searched and he started shooting us. He was also carrying, I guess, uh, voices, and he was also put under mind altering drugs after they ate the. Uh, Sleeping pills that gave him work, the hospital gave him some mind altering pills as well. So it seems that all the gun related mass murders in America in the last 20 years, probably 99% of them were all under the, you know, under the influence of mind altering drugs. Uh, the conspiracy theorists say, well, it's probably a, uh, a pattern there, a way for the, the government to, to create crises and to show the people that uh, maybe guns should be. Uh, well, another week is over here at the Zeta Nation. Now, time for the Plug Fest. Thank you for joining us here for episode 76 of The Revolution and come back next week for a brand new episode right here on YouTube. Go back and check out all of my other episodes right here on YouTube and subscribe to my channel, One Word Emperor Zeta, right here on YouTube. Pick up your drop dead Pinups Electric Night CD wherever you can. Find them on iTunes and follow them on Twitter for all the news about their latest album at Drop Dead Pinups. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Emperor Zeta. And head down to Excalibur Comics for all of your comic book conspiracy theory related needs. And I am a wrestling god.